What's up guys and welcome back to WBC Builds and welcome to part 2 of this Victorian house tutorial. So last time in part 1 we built the basement level and the ground floor and now in this part we'll be building the first floor, the second floor and the roof. And obviously in part 3 we'll be doing the garden and the driveway. So stick around to see how that turns out. So if you're looking for the material list, that is over on part one. I gave the full list for the entire building. If you're building this without watching part one, then okay. But anyway, yes, yeah, so make sure you've watched part one before you watch this one. And without further ado, really, let's jump on in and start off with the first floor. Okay, so the ground floor is now 100% done, I think. Let's sign, up on, let's sign off on it and go on up. So the next level is very much the same as this one. We've got two levels of this pretty much. So I'm going to grab out the white wall again and just carry on placing this around. So you want to go one level above all of this and then also another level above that again before we place in the next level of windows. So let me just go on around and do all of that so we can bring it all up to the same height. You guys can do that at home as well. Right, okay, so we're going to start with this side here. Now above this window we've obviously got the piece of quartz. Now I mentioned before about using quartz slabs as a way of adding a sort of window sill to this build and that's what we're going to do here. So above this window place four quartz slabs across it like that and you're left with a gap of one and a half which is still proportionally correct and I think looks perfectly fine. Now that's a big worry about these builds, trying to keep them proportionally correct within the sort of scale we're trying to do them in. So you're going to have a bit of fun learning the way of doing that if you start building in this style. So this wall needs to come up by six blocks now from this base here. So let's build that up. So the reason for that is because this section of the building only goes up two floors. Um, and it's just quite a nice little extra detail again. And with that, this is where the parlor is gonna be on each of these houses. Now the parlor is a sort of gentleman's area where they can retreat to, entertain their guests, you know, play cards, have a drink, have a smoke, you know, whatever they want to do in uh, Georgian England at the time or even in Victorian England, which is when this house was actually built. I believe this house was built in the 1840s. I, I had a miscalculation calculation earlier on when I was building it. I thought it was built in the 1820s, but it seems to have been a actual later one based on an earlier design, which I think is quite a neat idea. So I'm just going through and adding the iron trap doors again as we've got below. So we're gonna cap this off again with a piece of smooth quartz. That just adds a nice little bit of extra detail to it. And above that, we need to place in some more of this. Now, I'm going to go back around and obviously change that up so it's not just completely white wall. Although, it doesn't look too bad. I've seen worse. Now, above that, you place one more block again. And then this is where the actual top part of the roof comes in. But we'll get onto that once we've built the rest of this wall up. So let's start doing that. So around here, we now want to place in a window two blocks wide. So we want to place in a window two blocks wide here. And that should be at the same level as that. We can also put on, at this point, a window sill. Now, window sills are something I don't always put onto my builds. Uh, they are quite a nice little neat idea if you want to add a little bit of extra detail to it. I like to keep my stuff flat and plain because that is how the style is. Uh, if you start putting too many details into stuff, it can lose the actual proportions you were trying to get into it. So what I'm doing here is building this wall round by two because these windows must carry on up as a line now. Okay, so what I've just noticed there was the pagoda and that was one block too high. So I just lowered it down by one and now we can carry on with these windows around here. So placing in window sills like so, you've got two wide windows. So that conveys exactly the same as below. And then we carry on one, two, three blocks high for these windows. You may be noticing, hang on, you built that one over there four blocks high. Yes, I did. So that is the difference between these two because this is a separate building as such. It doesn't follow the same sort of symmetrical laws that this one does. And you'll see why later on as we built the roof on that one. So we're moving this one across. We've got three blocks in between these two windows and then it's one, two, three. And it's one, two, three on that one as well. Perfect stuff. And then you've got to place your bit of quartz across the top like so just to add that little bit of extra detail. So again, reminder that pagoda needs to move down by one block. I do apologize for that, but using world edit, that shouldn't be too hard to do. So finishing up this wall here at the centerpiece, it's time to go through now and convert all of the stuff we just placed down out of white wall into some white concrete powder as well. So what I'm gonna type in is the command replace white uh, with white and white concrete powder. There we go. And the same over here and the same over here. 
lovely stuff. So that just breaks up that texture a little bit, brings a bit more color to the building. So what I'm gonna do now is carry on around to the side. So here we're gonna have two windows on the side and they need to be four blocks in like so and we should be able to count four blocks in like so on this side. So we have two windows, one and then one, two, three, four in the middle. So these are all evenly spaced. And this is what I mentioned earlier on when I said you can have a fireplace in here because there's actually space in between the two windows up here to put a chimney breast up through. Perfect, so a little bit of detailing there. So this again is the same idea, one, two, three. These can be four blocks high because they're in the same room as this strange window at the front, which is four blocks high. So one, two, three, four, perfect stuff. Open those up with the trap doors. Place in your little bit of window sill in there. So coming around this side now, we can place across the top of these some pieces of quartz and pieces of quartz there. Moving on this all the way up to the same level so we can start thinking about putting the roof of this build on. So I'm going to use the same command that I've already got saved into my taskbar there to replace this section out so we can actually have a bit more of a contrast there. Same again with this. So coming around to the back of the building, we're going to have exactly the same window coming up, four blocks high again, and that just helps with all the symmetry of this little section. So let me just get that window in, and then we can move on to what to do with the back. So let me just do a quick little time lapse again. Okay, so we've added the windows around the back. So you can see here I've done the same again, just four blocks high, re replicated up here on this second floor. Now for the actual main section of the house, I've gone for three windows across, like we said about in the earlier section of the video, where we obviously just put the door in down here, this sort of just main plain door down here. Don't worry about that. We'll figure that out in part two when we do the landscaping around this section. So what we're gonna do now is come on in and build up the rest of this so it all matches or else it looks a bit odd um, and then from there we're going to put in the floor so let me just get the floor in place so we can start putting in the floor usage up here i think it's only two floors in this one so let's let's quickly jump to a little time lapse quickly of me placing in the floor Okay, so we come to the stair conundrum again. Now this is obviously a feature that people have been asking for for a long time from my videos on how to do stairs. So the answer is very difficultly. <laughs> so we've got this stair that go up, so one, two, up to a small little landing, then one, two, three, up to another small little landing, which has a sort of wall around it because you can hide yourself underneath coving, which you can put down here. Now I know it doesn't look pretty as such, but you can't see this, um, you either can cover it up with, I like smooth quartz slabs above it, give it a little bit more depth, so you've got some nice coving and coolness up there, looks quite nice, um, and then it can help cover up this mess, yeah. Uh, and you wander on upstairs, ignore all of that, and then you come to this floor now. So we're gonna open up into a hallway here, which will have that light there, that light source. And what's gonna happen here is we're gonna turn off in this direction like so, and you can come to the parlor <laughs> i like how i'm just thinking thinking while building it's always a good thing to do um yeah so you come to this little bit here so you've got a doorway into that way into the drawing room and then you've got the parlor over this side so in between here you can also have maybe a small little ante room or such breaks it all up a little bit more nice ideas there uh, it doesn't really matter how you have it all set up again if you come in here and just decide to completely redo the stairs or well, you've got a better idea on how to do stairs than me that would probably be better than me, but um, still, you can do it however you wish to do it. So I've, I've tried to keep it with a bit more interesting sort of depth in here. You can also just, you know, play around with whatever you want to play around with. Um, fireplaces, again, you can place one in that corner over there, and it'll be the same over there, so you can fit one in between. But you've got so much space to choose from, it's definitely worth trying the interior in here. I'm not going to lie, I had quite a bit of fun trying to figure out this interior because it's again something I don't do much of and I've made it my sort of New Year's resolution as in for my channel New Year in order to actually get better at building interiors. So we're going to finish this off by filling this in um, and then we're going to move on upstairs to the final floor and then we can get onto the roof and then this video doesn't have to be over an hour long. 
insert sort of message on screen when it is over an hour long and I've just failed us all but anyway let's get this finished right okay so that's this floor plan done you can see it on screen now take a screenshot if you wish to figure out how it's done I have obviously just shown it off as well as a neat little idea but the rooms are pretty simple pretty big this is the drawing room on this side and then we've got the parlor over this side so these are your sort of more retreating two rooms and then we have in the center a nice ante room for you to just sort of chill in so what we're going to do before we copy and paste this all is come around and actually finish off this whole entire side and then we can copy and paste it over once it's done so it's not looking like a sorry sad state over here look at this it's, it's really weird I'm, i didn't build it like this in the um, in the test so i didn't know how it's going to look building it half and half so anyway let's get on to this next section here and see how it goes okay so for this floor we are just going to carry on the same procedure so we count one two three and knock out these blocks here and place in the iron trap doors now these windows are only two blocks high uh, and that's mainly because these are the sort of where the, the the cleaners the cooks they all live up here it's a smaller room you don't need big windows for this place it's also where the children of the house would live and that sort of thing uh, i find it really interesting trying to, fig uh, trying to figure out what each room's meant for when i'm trying to build them same way i give each building i build uh, an actual reason to exist so that, that's probably an idea to come up with if you guys are doing interiors so it's just going to be two windows up like that and it'll be the same over here again so we come on round take out those two place in some iron trap doors knock out this and rinse and repeat up like so well the interesting bit is when we get onto this little roof here in two seconds and we'll show you how to do that right okay so that's what that floor looks like uh you can see it's it's very different in height from the others but it just helps bring in the sense of proportion to this build which i think is great so it's now time to move on over to this little roof section here and we're going to put a pediment on it so the way to do this we're going to be using um, smooth quartz stairs and smooth quartz slabs and from that form a nice pediment across the top of this building which is what's the key sort of part of it that gives it a nice neoclassical feel so enough mumbling it's time to place these blocks down so one there and then you count across two one two another one there another one two another one and one two and you get this nice little pattern with a bit of crenellation underneath there now above this we want to be placing the slabs so there's going to be a course of slabs that run along the edge like that now there's going to be two sets of quartz slabs like this and then what we do is go up uh, and you need to obviously place slabs annoyingly so like so and then behind that you can either start filling up with smooth quartz hole blocks or the slabs like i'm doing here and it'd be the case of doing exactly the same thing around this side but this carries on the whole way along and we're going to have to carry on putting in those little crenellations as well so we need to get one in the corner we didn't do one over here but we should have done one in the corner like that and then one two one two one two and you get the idea until you get to the end like that so let's carry on building this pediment before i forget to and you can carry on building it up like so until we get to the center and at the center because we've got a two block center it needs to be two blocks wide uh, this can ruin the effect sometimes but i think for this build it's actually been perfectly fine so that is how you do the little pediment at the top uh, and i think it just yeah it, it brings this whole build together because you've got this extra little bit of detail on the top like that whack on some shaders and you can see the depth in there with the quartz behind now you can use a different block behind but the reason i've gone for quartz is because these are slabs and you don't really want to see whole blocks behind that aren't made of the same block so here comes the interesting part because we need to carry this on as a roof so for this i'm going to be using stone brick slabs and we can just move this along like this and you get a nice little thing now when we come to this bit it's a case of carrying on the smooth quartz slabs um we're going to have to carry on all of this around here as well so we're going to count out one two um now there isn't going to be a pediment on the end of this one because the size isn't right but there is just going to be a case of putting down we have to put them as one after the other i think there we are so it, it doesn't always match up with these sort of shapes and styles but it can do quite a nice job so this isn't going to go like that just yet because we have another floor above there but what's going to happen now is we're going to bring this roof back and it turns into a, some sort of hipped roof at the back here so it covers this bit over uh, and this is just because this is an extension that's been put on later there would have been a second pediment at the back 
but that has changed over the years. So on the corners, you want to be using some polished granite there, just as we've done with the roof down the bottom, and that just helps break it up a little bit. So let's carry this roof on up like so, and we'll do the same over here. So we're going to have two hips meeting together, and this is a case of following up all the lines as you would do with a normal roof. Like that. And then we'll meet in the center with two. Um, and what you can do at this point is I like to just carry on with the same tile I was using rather than having a ridge on there with two blocks wide. Because I think ridges at two blocks wide just don't work very well at all. So we're carrying on this. This is all linking up nicely together. Uh, that's one thing with roofs. You can really mess up a roof if you don't have it linking up properly. Now, this one's going to carry on past this. So the idea is this sort of just carries on, joins in like so, uh, and then not, not, nothing more instead of that little bit of roof until it needs to carry on this way across the top and joins in with the pediment over here. Um, and then, yeah, it's just a case of carrying this all the way across so you get this nice little secondary roof over this side. I've just placed a block in there. And you'll see how different it looks to the main roof when we put that on in a bit. But let's just fill this all in and then we can see how it looks. Okay, so what I've chosen to do is just put a single ridge through the center. Helps tie up all these little um all these little hip ridges together, and I think it doesn't look too badly, even with the two block center. So that's a little design choice you can make yourself. But that's the sort of edge building done. I like to call it the edge building because that's not a word anyone's ever used to describe a building. But yeah, so it's now time to carry on with the actual main middle part of the house. So we need to carry on this upper floor to the same level and then we can get the floor and the actual roof in and then we can start, well, start finally finishing this build off. Like I mentioned earlier on, I will do a part two on this showing the landscaping the garden and also the front drive area as that's quite an important part to making this build look good but this video is going to be too long with it in so we're going to have to cut that out put that into a second part so guys go check that one out if i have actually posted it okay so we're around the back now it's time to put in these windows up the back so we count one two three knock out that one there and grab the trap doors again perfect stuff build that up so this is actually where the wall carries on back, so we join in with the wall over there. So we kind of, this is the issue, we kind of need to use nothing to do with white concrete at this point, because I don't want the whole floor falling down. Um, so we're going to have to build it up with the white. There we go, like that. And that just comes across and becomes the external wall. Um, we can then build up maybe an internal wall up to it. But this is how your your internals may be governed by some future things that happen within the building. But I think we're okay with this for now. You may end up seeing a little bit there, or you can just put some white wall or white concrete powder in there. It all depends on your taste and perf you know perfections. I don't having a double skinned wall inside is desirable. It can't always happen sometimes, so you might be left with. The exposed sort of external wall inside and if you can cover it up a bit of furniture or something you'll be job a good but if not then it is just what happens like you don't want to be placing that there so we'll come back and figure this one out in a bit when we get the interior done for it but this staircase yeah it might have to move that's the only thing um a lot of these staircases i've put in sort of just ad hocly but there we go we can fix it now Okay, so once you put the window in, what you want to do is place a wall across the edge here um, out of everything and anything, as in the white concrete or the white wall, uh, because we've managed to build the center wall in the right place so it doesn't actually fall down. So if we just select all of this and go over here and do the old replace white with that, you get yourself a nice external wall which looks over above the top of this roof level. So over here, we need to knock out this green um, terracotta so we can get the window in there in a second and carry on building up these so let me just rinse and repeat that here and then we can get on to actually starting the roof
Okay, so that's all the windows in the back. You've got that little ridge there that connects in like so. Not too much of an issue. I think we've got the same on the front as well, and it looks perfectly fine. So it's now time just to put the floor in here, put in the floor plan, and then we can move on up to the roof. So let me just get this floor in, a little quick time lapse again, and then we can carry that on. Okay, so as always, take a little screenshot now if you wish to see how the floor layout goes. Let's do a quick little bit of measurements. So this, these buildings, these rooms are six blocks off, sorry, five blocks off the main wall there. And this carries on back another 11 blocks from the stairwell. The stairwell is in the same place as it was when we moved it up here, which I think looks quite nice still. We've, we've, I, I'm really happy with how this interior has actually turned out, considering I don't do interiors at all. Uh, this one's now seven blocks across from the actual internal wall there's no fireplace up here because i've sort of made this room here maybe the toilet bathroom area and this carries on um all the way across the back here so 17 blocks between those so again that's the interior of that one this building has really quite nicely come together with the interiors in so it's time now to copy and paste that section over to there so we can get a clear image of how it looks and then we can put the roof on. Oh, I'm so excited to put the roof on because once the roof goes on, it is absolutely done. And hey presto, as if by magic, we now have both halves looking gorgeous. So what makes this build so nice is just how it looks absolutely grand when you view it from a distance or even up close. I know I'm flying over all my other projects over here, but it's massive. We've gone from like small to big-ish, to a, 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 quite a large building, to absolutely gigantic. So um, yeah, I'm really impressed of how this house has come out. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, this isn't the end, we've got to do the roof still. But as I said, we will do another part on this where I build all of the landscape, the front gardens and the back gardens, to give you guys a proper understanding of how I like to do landscapes. But it's time now to get this roof going. So let's get started with that. So what you want to do is build up one more block of our lovely mixture of white concrete powder and white wall without dropping too much of it all over the place. So let me just place this all down. And now this needs to go all the way around this section here, uh, which is obviously like I've called it the main body of the house. Um, and now I've, I've done that because obviously this bit on the side stops a little bit earlier. So if I just quickly do a nice bit over here from there to there and do set white concrete powder and white we get a nice little texture across there um, let me know in the comments below as well if you've enjoyed learning a bit more about world edit or if it really doesn't fuss you and you kind of wish i hadn't used it at all um, it'd be interesting to see what the sort of selective is across the board down there because i use it all the time i love using it uh, makes builds a little bit easier and also just gives you a bit more depth and texture in walls without having to go through and manually do it but I know there's a lot of guys that like to do stuff in survival where you would have to do that sort of thing by hand, so good on you. Okay, so that's that level done. It's now time to place around the little lip that goes over it. So for this, we're going to be using just some smooth quartz slabs. And that now sits around the top like this, all the way around the house. Okay, and you may notice I've actually started omitting these corners. And I do that on purpose because I don't like the way the harsh corner looks sometimes, especially on a building like this. But that ridge around the top there, that sort of cornice, that overhang for the eaves really does bring out a lot in this build. So now it's time to get on to the actual roof section itself. Look at the size of this place. So this roof is going to take the same motifs as the one we have down here in front of the doorway. So we're going to use the polished granite on the edges and the stone brick slabs and stone brick stairs in the main section. So the building starts off like this. You place one block here. I tend to omit this bit like I mentioned earlier on, just because I'm not a big fan of pointy corners like that. But when you get an overhang on top of it, works perfectly fine in my eyes. With the stone bricks, you need to go along the whole way round, all the way across the front like so. And we're gonna build this up in layers. Now it's quite a shallow pitched roof. Uh, this is because during the Georgian period, they were very common. Uh, you don't really want a really steep roof on a building like this as it would ruin the sort of feel of it all. So the only difference really with this rather than it just going up one slab at a time is there's a couple of sections I'll show you where the roof actually goes up and then stays the same level for two sections of diagonals. Uh, it'll make more sense once we get through that in a second. But there's only another little one random bit that happens. On this roof section here, it's not the same as this. 
I chose to use a mixture to make this roof feel like it's been covered in maybe a bit of lead because this is like a flat roof rather than the same sort of tiled roof as we're going for here. So around the edges I've placed down some andesite slabs and this is just to simulate that sort of lead feeling like we did with the porch down below. And I think it works really well in just capturing that. So that carries on around to about there where the original window, sorry, where the original uh, roof would start again. So you place a bit of granite in there to start the corners off. Um, so that means we are now ready to place the first chimney in. So if we come to this section here and find the middle block in, so I believe this is 16 across, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 is going to be in the middle, uh, and you may be wondering, hang on, it's an even number, you can't have a middle. Well, this chimney is actually going to be three blocks wide to sort of ruin all of that idea of uh, evenness. And this is just because the, the sort of length and height is much better when you do it this size. So we go up by three blocks again and you got yourself a chimney breast. Now I tend to use anvils to signify my chimney pots. A lot of people use flower pots or bits of wall or something. Um, I like to go for anvils because of the shape. They're so different and interesting and it also it draws your eye to it as well because of the way it sits up there. And it's a black sort of block, looks like it's been covered in soot or something over time. So again it works quite nicely as a little detail for that. So with this extra bit of roof here, we need to carry on going around with these tiles, filling up all of the wall like this, filling up the wall like this, and then we carry on this way as well, and carry on round to here. So at this point, the wall goes, so the roof goes up by one. This carries on like that, and we get ourselves the first sort of pitch going on. So this carries on all the way across like so to the other piece of granite, this side, and you get an idea of where you are then. So we need to place a diagonal one in there. Now this bit we've got left in the middle, uh, we're going to texture that out by using more stone slabs like this. Bring that round and it's going to be a similar sort of idea. It's going to be a very shallow pitched roof uh, and the idea behind that is just because it makes a bit more sense. So I've kept it like this so it's got a bit more detail to it. Uh, it sort of flows rather than it being uh, just a flat sort, of, flat sort of slate roof if that makes any sense. So the idea here is we just carry this all the way around the roof. So I'm going to build this whole thing up in this corner first before we can move on to the second bit. So you know how I mentioned earlier on where these don't go up by half each time? We've got the first section of where the two slabs just sit here in sort of the same level. So this carries on back like this and so does this. Now this helps just give you a bit more of a shallow roof rather than it sort of having a big old pitch on it. And like I said, I chose to do that because it's just a a nicer way of having these Georgian builds because you don't really want a big old pitched roof on them. That's something a bit more gothic and we'll come on to those later on in my building series. So what I've done there is I've just placed in the corners like that. I've left off these corners and it's sort of got a bit more of a slope to it. I've not put any granite in there because this is more of a flat roof that has a slight sort of uh, ridge on it but nothing, nothing too major. So that now carries on like that and actually flattens out so we end up the flat roof at that point. What you can do is go back through and texture a little bit with some andesite as it gives you a bit more of like a lead lined bit. I think that looks quite nice. It's a lovely little bit of texturing there. So if you can see what we're doing with the main roof, uh, it's just a case of now following this all the way up. So I'm going to do this for this whole side here and then we'll find out where we need to go by bringing up this side as well. So we carry on the same idea, the same pattern and then we carry that up by two and then this goes up again and carries across like two. So we got one half slab, half slab again, but across by two, half slab again, but across by two at a diagonal. And then we carry on up by one more again this time. So we've got half slab there. And then we go up again. It's quite, a, you know, it is quite a pitched roof, but yeah. And then this carries on as sort of the same level again. And then we go up one last final time before we reach what I should be, the root, the ridge of the roof. That should be three blocks long. And if you look at that, my calculations are correct because we're sitting over the center. I love it when a plan comes together. So you can see that's the ridge height and it's a lot shallower than it would be if this roof was built with sort of slabs going up in increments of half a slab. So let's get this bit over here matching up with that. And then it may be time to jump to a little time lapse to finish this roof bit off because it's all just rinse and repeat from there. And then once we're done with that, we can get the chimneys in. I can show you guys the sort of finishing touches of what to do with the building before we move on to our final part of this series, which will be the landscaping.
So let's run through that one last time so you guys understand exactly what I'm trying to say. So we start off here on the corner with nothing underneath it. One granite slab and then we go up by another half slab. Up another half slab but across diagonal, one on the same slab length. Up and then across again diagonal like that on the same level. And then we go up by a half a slab and across on the same level. Up by half a slab and then we got the ridge. So this is exactly the same going back this way as well. Because I believe... I built it as a square, I think. <laughs> it should work, uh, it is definitely a square. So let me just get this going in a little time lapse quickly so you guys don't have to sit through me placing that block by block and then we can talk about the final touches. Okay, so that is the roof complete, and I must say, once this roof's on, it really does pull this build together, because you've got the darkness of the sort of the grey on there from both the base and the upper levels, and it just works perfectly well. So let's just fly around quickly to give you guys a little look at the whole place, and I was going to say about the back here. Now, you can leave it as the sort of intended colour of the whole build, or what you can do as well is come over here and change it up to actually a mixture of granite and I would say granite and brick so we can replace the white and the white concrete with 45 and granite. Now the reason that is is because the backs of these Georgian buildings were never really covered in the stucco that the front's covered in and it will also give you a nice little contrast to the actual building itself and you can even have it wrapped around the corners slightly so it carries on that way or you can just get rid of that as well and have it slightly different but when we get down to doing the garden in our next part you'll be able to see that the brick really does come to life when you throw a bit of a greenery in there so we're going to get on and put the last couple of chimneys in which are just these two in the center over here so we've got middle piece here going up to the center and we're going to place one two and then the third one up there and it'll be the same height again so try and get them one block higher than those and that is your sort of centerpiece and it really does bring the build together, takes your eye up to that point. Coming around to the back, we're going to do the same again. So you knock out that one, and then these two flat pieces here. And then, hey presto, you got yourself two chimneys on there. So that is the overall body of the building done. You've got your two houses copied and pasted and flipped across to each other. And it is all looking perfect. So, we're going to jump off now and we'll come back into this in part 3 where I show you guys how to do the driveway and the gardens. So thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.